烧，银铃声，卡埃拉铃，阿萨卡哈拉铃，扎卡拉铃，烧埃铃铃声。Namaste. So, I find it really kind of strange that when I put a lot of effort into、uh, creating a video that's based on authentic sources and gives people the tools that they need to become self-realized, it doesn't get very good response. Not many views. No comments, or any comments there are, are very superficial. But when I just like sit back and rap freestyle about what I think about stuff, that gets a lot of views. And the reason I find that strange is that just hearing my opinions doesn't give you anything substantial, huh? These are just my thoughts about stuff. Whereas, when I authentically give materials from the scriptures, these are tools that enable you to reach the same points of view on your own.、And、what I think is going on is that people nowadays are imitationists. In other words, they're insincere. They're inauthentic. They borrow opinions from other people they think are cool, and then they go around spouting them as if they're, they're, those are their own thoughts. It's out of integrity, folks. So, well, that's the world we live in, huh? So let's talk about the world we live in, and what's going on in it. I've linked in the description below a paper by a fellow named John Glubb, and he's a historian and scholar, and was also very politically active and so on during his time. So he understood both the principles of historical development, civilizational collapse, and like that, and he also lived it. It wasn't an armchair view. He was out there on the field and actually got shot, and that's how he died. So Glubb knew firsthand the symptoms of a collapsing civilization, and you read his stuff, and it's almost like he's been reading the news today. The same things. Have gone on in collapsing cultures all over the world since history began. It's nothing new, but you know somebody said, "Those who do not learn from history are condemned to repeat it."、And、somebody else said, "The only thing we learn from history is that nobody ever learns from history." What does that mean? Okay, so let's talk about cultures and civilizations. What are they? Well, technically speaking, they're complex systems, and a complex system has certain failure modes. This is well known, especially to computer guys, because they build complex systems all the time, and they break, and they have to fix them. So, what happens in a complex system is that you you build up a bunch of fabrications like a house of cards, and one is built on the next, and the next, and the next levels upon levels upon levels. So usually, what happens is some little assumption in the foundation of the thing is wrong. And because of that, if that thing breaks, 
gradually the whole thing collapses like a house of cards. Huh? You ever see those videos where they build up Legos and stuff like this, and then they pull one out and the whole thing collapses, boom. <laughs> so it's like that. And this has happened in history again and again and again on a cycle of about 250 years. Glubb points out, for example, the British Empire. And now we are living in a, at the close of the American Empire. Next will come probably the Chinese Empire, or who knows. So when a, a civilization collapses, it collapses in a certain way, a very predictable way. Because what happens is the structure, the, the pyramid of fabrications that has been created is mirrored by a social pyramid with a small number of elites at the top and then the vast numbers of people on the bottom. And so the structure of that fabrication becomes rigidized. Why? Because the people on the top want to stay in power. Human nature, right? So the structure becomes rigid and anything that tends to change or collapse the structure is viewed as a big threat. And so what they do is they justify all kinds of misbehavior on the basis of this is a threat to our structure. This is a challenge to our power. So what happens is they become more and more and more immoral, more and more destructive, more and more untruthful, and because of all these nasty, sinful acts, they accrue a lot of karma. And eventually the collective karma brings the whole thing down. But what is collective karma? It's chaos. It's scientifically called entropy. And what it is is that any structure that you try to impose on the world gradually becomes encrusted with more and more and more complexity and rigid, rigid uh, structures and uh, these cascading failure modes until it finally collapses back into chaos, back into randomness. Huh? It loses its structure, in other words. Because what is information? Like today we live in the information age, right? <laughs> Big deal. <laughs> That's one of the symptoms of a collapsing culture, people. It happened in the Persian culture. It happened in the Roman Empire. It happened in the Greek Empire. It happened in the Indian Empire. There are several Indian empires. And it's happening to us now. Information is viewed as a commodity. And there's a whole market for it. That's one of the symptoms of a collapsing civilization. Why? Because information should be free. There shouldn't be a market for it. And this is one of the perversions that marks the end of an empire. And another thing, <laughs> this just goes on and on and on. The <laughs> Because the elites will do anything to keep their positions of power, they lie. Oh, they lie and lie and lie. And it gets worse and worse and worse. Huh? Until finally the whole structure collapses because nobody trusts anybody anymore. It's moral decay from the top down that destroys empires. And this is karma, cause and effect. If you don't want to use the word karma, all right, cause and effect. 
And the cause of moral degeneration is clinging to power. And then the moral, the acts of moral degeneration cause effects that ultimately destroy both the structures and the people who inhabit them. You know, right now there's a survivalist movement among the elites. A friend of mine who's a consultant was invited to give a lecture on some aspect of science or something and went to this meeting in Denver. And so he wasn't actually supposed to speak. What actually happened was he met with these suits, huh? these rich, rich people, very, very wealthy people, and they were asking him things like, how do we create a bunker that will allow us to survive the collapse of civilization? How do we keep the guards from turning on us and killing us and stealing everything? And he's basically, well, you have to create a community where those people feel, feel cared for and protected enough that they are obliged to you, they're obligated to you, they basically love you, and they want you to, to stay uh, in your position, they'll help you. And they were like, oh, we can't do that. <laughs> you see how bad it's gotten? These are our elites, these are our ultra-rich people. They're, thought, they're thinking in terms of putting explosive collars around a guard's necks. They can't trust anybody because they themselves are so untrustworthy. Huh? It's like the geckos. I have a lot of little geckos in here. And when they see me coming, they run. Huh? Now, I've never done any of these geckos the least bit of harm. You know? I like them, in fact. They're kind of cute. <laughs> but because a gecko thinks... You know, that, that any time I see a little bug, I'm going to, like, go for it and attack, right? So when he sees somebody like me who's, like, you know, a hundred times bigger than him, he thinks I'm the same way. So similarly, a person who is in a state of moral decay assumes that everybody else is too. And so they act in such a way as to distrust everybody because they themselves are untrustworthy. So these are our leaders, huh? our misleaders. <laughs> now, real leadership comes from one piece of knowledge. And I'll tell you what it is. It was stated by Shankaracharya a long time ago. Brahma Satyam Jagat Mitya. Brahman is truth and eternity. And this world, everything else actually, that's not Brahman, is illusion. Brahman is truth, everything else is bullshit. <laughs> so, if we invest in the world in any way, we're sure to be disappointed. What we should be doing is cultivating Brahman through meditation, through devotion. Huh? I'm giving you all the tools on this website and the problem is you don't use them because you think I'm like you and I'm trying to cheat you. Don't you? So, you know, I don't know what to do with you. You know, it's like I put a lot of work into these videos, but you don't appreciate them. You don't follow them. You don't use them. You don't take the benefit that I'm giving you free and use it to perfect your life and come to this Conclusion, this same conclusion, Brahma Satyam, Jagat Mitya. Because that's the only platform 
on which there's any security or any hope for the future. Everything else is going to collapse. What to speak of the, the empires, the political and social and economic structures, the fabrications that humans have made, huh? The whole, the whole planet is going to collapse sooner or later. Even the sun, the whole universe even, is going to collapse into nothing, into chaos, into full entropy. So don't invest in it, you know? Do the minimum to get by. And when you have the chance, or actually all the time, use the tools that we give to approach self-realization. That would be making a good use of your time. Don't just take what I say and, and take it as an opinion and then go, you know, spout it to other people so you're thinking that you're going to sound cool. You're not going to sound cool because it's inauthentic. The only way to have an authentic opinion is to go and experience it for yourself. So if you experience Brahman for yourself and then you can come out of your meditation and say, I have seen, I know. This is real. This is the reality. And all this other stuff is just bullshit. Uh, then you're worth listening to. Then you're worth associating with. Uh, because you have something real. You have something authentic that you can share and help others. Om Tat Sat. Om Shakti Om.